Persona is a JRPG series that has captured the hearts, pun intended, of the entire world since its inception. Uh, also pun intended. A storyline of Japanese high schoolers finding out that they have deities within them that can battle other deities, Pokemon style, seems to resonate with the masses. All jokes aside, Persona 5 is a phenomenal game and my second favorite game of all time. And with Persona 5 Royal just around the corner, I thought I'd challenge myself to see the game through a different lens, as well as shake the rust off before the new game releases. Today we ask the question, can you beat Persona 5 with just the starter Persona, Arsene? Now here are the rules for the challenge. I'm only ever allowed to use Arsene in battle. I am allowed to use skills of other Personas outside of battle, like healing spells. And this is not a solo run, so I will be using my teammates and their Personas as well. Another thing I'll mention is that Persona 5 is long. I'm talking road trip with a dead phone long. My first playthrough took over 100 hours to beat, so for this challenge I will not be including the majority of the story and focusing on the combat and Persona development areas of the game only. If you're looking for someone to explain the delicate nuances and elegantly crafted storylines, that's fine. Uh, just go somewhere else. Uh, leave a like first though. Thanks. The game starts with the Joker, baby. getting interrogated. I choose normal difficulty, name him appropriately, and start the game off by remembering that I killed a man. I meet Foster Daddy who shows me the digs and I have a dream about a BDSM threesome with twins while a weirdo watches over us. So Jiro shows off the drip and we meet the villain, a shit-talking teacher who loves kids. I meet an annoying Super Saiyan and we instant transmission into the first palace. We go to jail for a bit and Ryuji throws them bows in retaliation. Not to be outdone, Kamoshida gives him the four piece with the biscuit combo and even offers a drink. He spits on him. Joker thinks spit is gross, so he awakens our sin, and the tutorial combat begins. We break free of prison and decide to go rescue my new best friend, a cat. I am not a cat. Say that again and I'll make you regret it. Yeah, whatever, man. Our non-cat pal kills a dick devil, and our sin learns cleave, one of four total moves he can learn naturally. We escape the palace and go right back for some reason. I don't know. Now, as cool as our sin looks, I have to be honest here. He sucks. The entire point of Joker's existence is that he can wield all personas, and the game reinforces this point by making your starting persona bad and slow to level up. Regardless, we push on to a safe room and continue battling. Almost all of the first castle is a tutorial, so these fights are really easy. Most go down in one hit and aren't too powerful. This is a benefit though, as I can take every fight to grind up levels. Moving on, Ryuji decides to bring fake guns to a knife fight, and we let the chopper sing on ops. Our sin reaches level 3. We get ambushed and I get my ass beat by a goat horse because plot, so Ryuji decides to get his persona. Ryuji's the tank of the group and has good strength as well, so it's a nice addition. We face off against a guard captain, who immediately brings in the goat horses from earlier. But because I know the battle ends instantly after beating the captain, I focus everything on him. The fight is relatively easy and ends in just two turns. Back in the real world, we get introduced to On and get what I consider to be the absolute best dialogue in video game history. Come on, dude, you can't go after Kamashita's bitch. Damn. We go back to the palace, I capture Pixie, and the game forces me to use her. So, no, I cannot beat the game using just our sin. Thanks for watching. I plow through the weak enemies in the lower part of the castle, it's just mainly pumpkins and horny flying men. Anne joins the squad, and we fight the devil on a toilet. He's weak to fire, so the fight is a bit of a breeze, although he did do a bit of damage to the party. We head back to the real world and fuck it! Cat simping on a girl. Boot. What a girl. She's captured my heart. I meet the hottest doctor in the entire world and go to trade with the Y, the weapons dealer. Because our sin is going to be underleveled until at least the third palace, Joker's gonna need the best equipment for a while. I head back to the palace to grind and to get the treasure. I run into slightly stronger enemies like Pot Goblin and Ghost Horse, but still nothing difficult. Until that is, this dickhead shows up. Beareth is level 9, well ahead of the other personas. He has strong resistances and can almost one shot any member of my team. Luckily, we shock him turn 1, which gives us the time needed to take him out easily. Thanks to the fight, Arsene reaches level 5 and learns Dream Needle, which puts foes to sleep. This move is going to be incredibly helpful later on. 
The game warns me that a big fight is coming up, so I prep and head in to face another guard captain. This enemy's gimmick is to teach me how to guard, so thankfully the fight isn't all that difficult. Later, I see a treasure chest. I'm low on health when a shadow sneak attacks me. I have no chance. I get surrounded, and I get sucked off by the devil. First death in the run. I leave the palace, come back on 420, nice, and reach the roof. All of the enemies here are strong, and Dream Needle literally carries me through fights. I wouldn't have won without it. I reach the puzzle where you need to find both eyes to cross the bridge, and this is where a serious issue occurs. The keys are on captains at the bottom floor of the tower. The first captain is strong, and deadass one-shots me the first turn. That wasn't the issue though. The issue was this guy. He all of a sudden remembered that he has a bless move that attacks my whole team, and since our sin is weak to bless, he has no problem wiping me out. He does this not one, not two, not three, but three times. Eventually, I sleep him so much that I finally win. I die to this enemy more than the boss of the palace. Eventually, I run into another guard captain, who looks like, uh... It's a penis! He's supposed to be strong, but sleep is too powerful. I hit him with Dream Needle and Dormina repeatedly, and the fight is over before it even starts. It's time to face Kamoshida. Kamoshida isn't really difficult at all. Although tanky, his moves are incredibly weak, and after removing his ability to heal and stealing the crown off of his head, you can end the fight embarrassingly quickly. At the end of the first palace, I'm level 12, with Arsene being level 9. Not terrible, but not great. Before the next palace starts, I boost my confidants with Big Titty Goth Girlfriend and Big Boss for their perks. I high five Ryuji, go to school, and head to Mementos for the first time. Mementos is important, since I'll be needing a lot of money and experience throughout the next two palaces. I grind a bit and fulfill Mishima's first request, the mini boss that starts Madarame's arc. He's an absolute breeze thanks to Dream Needle, and I level up. Kamoshida confesses, and I work on Mishima's confidant, since it gives more XP in battles. Afterwards, I head back to Mementos to grind, fulfill another request, and get Arsene to level 11. The grind in Mementos was serious. I spent over an hour going through every single floor, fighting every single enemy, and finding every single treasure chest. I did this twice. And the worst part of it all? Arsene did not level up one time. Whatever. Time for Madarame. Before that though, I head back to upgrade my gear. Arsene is still really weak, so I need good weapons. Madarame's palace is probably the easiest in the game. And since I was grinding in Memento so hard, the first enemies are extremely easy. They're about two levels below me. Deeper in the palace, Morgana trips the lasers, I rescued the team, and captured the treasure persona. These will be extremely important later, so I need to catch every single one that I find. My favorite Phantom Thief Yusuke joins the team, immediately shows his worth by shitting all over the enemies in the subsequent fight, and we run away to fight another day. In the meantime, I get hungry and ate a burger, and got a job to start the Sun Confidant. Back in the palace, I start running into tougher enemies, like Jack Frost, Scary Dog, and what the fuck is that? Still, nothing really poses a threat, and I'm able to get away with rushing through most waves. The next area has me do my best Blue's Clues impression as I fly through paintings to get to the next area. Is anybody old enough to remember Blue's Clues here? Nah, whatever. Anyway. There's a mini boss after the paintings. And it's him. Shikyoji. Nah, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it anyway, as a persona that blocks all physical attacks. This makes dealing with him annoying since he also puts out good damage and is quite tanky. This means that Morgana is going to have to carry the load for damage since he's the strongest magic user on my team. As luck would have it though, he wastes his turns on buffs and ailments like taunt, which allow me to get in all the damage necessary to beat him, even if he did nullify Morgana by taunting. Beating him gives me Media a move that heals all party members and actually gives our sin some use in certain fights. I'll gladly take it. Pushing forward, I find that I do not have a keen eye for art at all, kill a few more dogs, and turn the lights out on Madarame's exhibit. A security guard didn't like that, and oh my god no- Psych, like he was easy this time too. I find the crane for the treasure, send the calling card, and it's time to fight Madarame. Madarame can be a tough boss fight if it goes on for too long. He has the ability to put black goop on your whole team and make you weak to all affinities, operates as four separate enemies, can regenerate, and has some strong magic abilities. Thankfully I learned moves that hit multiple enemies as that cuts down the time I need to spend targeting. 
The fight looks bad after he knocks Morgana, but since I have the Bomb of Life item, I'm able to keep him in the fight. I keep on my strategy of hitting all body parts until they're low on health, and then I target them one by one. When he reverts to regular Madarame, I go all out on damage, and the fight ends before things can get out of hand. I didn't go down a single time in Madarame's palace, and I actually spent more time prepping for it than being in it. At the end of Madarame's palace, I'm level 19, with Arsene being level 15. Hey everybody, this is Tevin uh, from Post Edit. Um, I'm gonna be honest, when I originally cut down the 20 to 30 hours of footage this took, um, I thought this was going to be somewhere around 30 to or 20 to 30 minutes. Um, instead, it ended up being about 10 minutes. Um, I already planned on this being installments, so I am currently working on part two, but this just means that part two is going to be longer. Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna hold you guys, I'm not gonna make this too long. Um, if you like the video, please give it a like, it took me a, quite a while to get this done. And leave a comment, any feedback is always appreciated. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.